going on YouTube friends? My name is Stu. Welcome back to my channel. I had a request to do a tonalism painting tutorial, which was great. This will be a fun one to do. I never have done a tonalism style painting before. <laughs> so tonalism painting is very different from my style of painting. So I typically in my fine art pieces, I will use the layering method. I will use very vibrant, vivid colors. I will use a lot of detail and try to make things look as true as they look in a photograph or as they do in person. However, tonalism is not like that at all. Tonalism, you want to set the tone, you want to create a mood, you do not want to go into a lot of detail, you do not have a lot of contrast in color value or in warm versus cool. The painting seems to have an overall general sense of cool or warm, not both <laughs> in the single painting. Uh, and the approach for the painting is very different as well. It doesn't seem like the layering method is used that often for tonalism painting. Uh, it's more like let's work wet and wet. And uh, one of the things that I talk about in my plein air painting videos is how it's tricky to keep your painting from getting mucky and losing your colors when working wet on wet. But in tonalism, that's almost the point. You want everything to look mucky and uh, gray, like, like almost closer in value. You want the colors to all kind of work into each other and not stand out too much from one another. So this should be interesting. This is not how my brain is wired to paint, but that is what we're going to try to do today. So I've seen tonalism style paintings out there by artists that are, uh, you know, alive and working today. And I've also seen tonalism paintings from the 1900s, the 1800s. It appears that tonalism emerged in the 1880s and it was a short-lived, maybe like a 20, 30 year period where it was really popular. And then now it's starting to kind of make a comeback with some contemporary artists. So I have seen a number of completed paintings, but I wasn't sure about how they did the process to get from start to finish to make it look like that. So I watched other YouTube videos for contemporary tonalist painters and they explained their process. And I found out that their process is very different than the way that I approach a painting. So let's dive into it real quick and I'll talk more as we go. So this is the painting we're going to make today. I'm going to be working on an eight inch by 10 inch canvas panel today. And then for a palette, I'm just using an old canvas panel. These are the paints for today. So as I mentioned before, we want to keep a cool palette for this one. We don't want any bright, vivid, warm colors. So we don't want any cadmium reds or yellows or oranges. We want the cooler tones. The yellow ochre is probably getting the closest to the warm colors there, but we're going to blend it in with some cooler colors to tone it down. So we're going to start with burnt umber with a little ultramarine blue just to set the, the tone for the whole painting. And then we're going to, we got some titanium white. We got a little bit of dioxazine purple, which I probably won't use too much of, uh, some yellow ochre, ivory black, ultramarine blue, magenta, and sap green. So I, this is very different from my paintings as well. We don't have a ton of colors. We only have two, four, six, eight colors, and there's a chance I won't use all of them. <laughs> and then for our brushes here, as I mentioned, this is not going to be a super detailed painting. So we are only going to have four brushes here. None of these are liner brushes, which I usually like to use. We have a flat tip brush here. We got a small angled brush, a smaller semi round brush and a medium semi round brush just to get those nice soft textures going. It's also important to have a uh, like a paint thinner. So I have my citrus solvents. This is the brand of paint thinner that I like to use. This is a safer alternative to using mineral spirits. Uh, to thin down your oil paint and it works great. So we're going to start with this brush, dip this brush into the citrus solvents, take some umber and a little ultramarine blue and some white. And we could be using a larger brush here. You know what, I might actually do that. Gonna switch to a larger brush just to get this tone set. 
So we just mix some umber, white, and blue. And we're just doing a wash basically over this whole canvas. Sometimes I do this for my realism paintings. However, I let this layer dry first, and this helps me to start with a more of a neutral background than a bright white background. Just helps you set your colors more accurately. Um, but for tonalism, we're setting this, and then we're gonna start working immediately right over this wet layer of paint. And even mix in like a little bit of black down here. All right, so now we wanna keep everything cool. We wanna keep everything close in value range. We don't want anything to stand out too much and be too bright or too dark from the other things in the painting. So I'm just gonna take that brush that I already blended colors with and start to blend some white into there. And then I'm gonna blend some ultramarine blue. And it's already, as you can see on the palette here, it's already muting that down. It's not quite as bright and vibrant as it would be if I just use pure white with blue. And it's gonna do it even more once I start working on this canvas here. So I'm just going back and forth. Blending our colors onto the painting that already has this wet layer of umber and ultramarine and white. And we're using oil paint, so everything's going to stay wet this entire time we're working. Then we're gonna mix in some magenta, some more white, and some ochre. Let's make an ochre spot first. Then we'll go down to the pinkish color next. And I'm just gonna softly blend that up into my bluer color in the sky. Take more of our magenta down here. up so we have really subtle changes in color here. Then we're going to take a little more ultramarine, white, a little hint of ochre in there too. This one under there. And we're just going to softly blend that up. back and forth brush strokes all the way up the sky, softening out the blends. And take a little more white with ochre. Just 
just bringing that down a little with some blue. I'm just going to put that back up here. That blend up. So a really muted sky background there. Not a whole lot of variation. And then we've got these trees kind of coming up. So we're gonna take some umber and some black and some blue. Hint of our thalo green and ochre. And we've got one like right here. I'm just doing these quick little brush strokes just to get the basic form of the tree. Just very lightly letting the brush drag the paint around. We can make some even farther in the distance by adding a little more white and blue.
trees in there. Pretty loosely painted, not a lot of detail. And now we can work on the grasses in the foreground. So for the grasses, we're gonna get some ochre, some umber, or yeah, some burnt umber. And we'll do a little bit of magenta in there too. And then to cool it down, let's use a little sap green. And maybe a little blue. And at first I'm just gonna go back and forth a little bit. Just get a little bit of paint on there. Take a little more ochre. And then we're gonna do some up and downs. Can thin the paint down a little more. Now we're just going up and down, making our way across the canvas, getting the grass, completely covering that horizon line that we painted before, or just like the point where we brought the sky down to before. And the trick is keep everything cool. I don't wanna over saturate my grass here. I don't want the grass to stand out too much. Now we could take a little bit of our purple and our black. I mean, our umber, maybe a little bit of black too, sure. And just start to go up and down the foreground here. Just keeping those same up and down, kind of some diagonal marks for these grasses. And the colors are blending on the canvas. It's kind of muting them down even more than they are on the palette. And we could take some umber, purple, and black again. And we'll just keep darkening a couple of these little sections one by one here, not going too crazy, but just trying to build a little bit of depth, keep it from getting too flat looking. And take the same brush, clean it off a little, put some more white an ochre. And let's do a little black too, just to calm that down, make it a little darker, a little less saturated. And now we can do some little strands of grasses here with this brush. The bottom part, now all we gotta do is add that little moon at the top, so I'm just cleaning off my brush, taking some white. And I don't want the white to get too muddied up with the other colors. We kind of want to keep the white for the moon. Of course, it's going to blend a little with what we've got on the canvas, but we don't want anything too crazy or too drastic.
just taking the brush with no paint on it and very lightly going over in different directions. All right, we're going to soften things even more than they already are after looking at the finished painting and then looking at more tonalism paintings. This grass needs to be way more blurry. So I'm just softly pressing and blending. The painting's been sitting for about two hours now, so the paint is not dry yet because this is oil paint, still is wet, but it's a little bit easier to work with now. And just doing that really helped a lot, I think. It just softened everything. These uh, streaks of white or streaks of lighter grasses were a little much. For me to call this tonalism. Just very lightly pressing, kind of pushing the paint around. And it really is, even making this more blurry is still making the depth read pretty well. And I want to do a little more with the sky and the trees too. Just kind of keep pushing paint around and fuzzying up the edges. Kind of pushing the paint around from the sky. Taking away those obvious brush strokes and kind of softening everything. And then for the sky, I kind of want to just take, take a little bit of green in there with more ultramarine blue. Just kind of start to press in. Add that little bit more color and back to my pink and a little bit of ochre in there too again just start to get a little bit more going on in the sky so it's a little less boring <laughs> working on this tree too. I'm not too happy with the way that tree turned out. Kind of reworking that ground to sky line there. And we can add a little bit more white. And a hint of ochre to the moon. Just give it a little color. 
softening that edge a little bit. Setting like a little bit of light around the moon. Making my brush marks kind of follow around the moon as if it's kind of emanating out a little bit of light. Getting a little more color in that sky. Kind of like a little bit of haziness or clouds in the sky. I get so used to working in realism that I <laughs> forget to be creative sometimes. So this is helping to get things a little more creative. Use a little bit of our browns and oranges in here. Take a little more ochre, or sorry, a little more um, sap green and umber. I'll just add a little bit of green in here too. Some little sections. And then we gotta rework these trees. So I'm cleaning off my brush pretty good. Going back to our brown. And we'll just kind of let it create some loose branches. I'm not gonna lie guys, I'm struggling with the trees in this style painting. <laughs> Adding a little more black and brown to this front section of the trees. And it looks like once you get the tree in there, you just kind of play around, pushing the paint around with the wet paint until you're happy with your tree. Definitely looking better. Maybe we just add, use our imagination and add some more sap green and pretend like there are bushes down here. I 
little bit of umber with ultramarine blue in there too. And you can add a little ochre and make like little mini highlights. Lightening up this section here with a little bit of white and ochre. Just taking one more round of this brush to soften everything up. All right, I think that looks way better. And I'm gonna call that now a finished painting. There we go. All right, guys, that is the finished painting now. I added a little more to the sky. Sorry, there's a bit of a glare from the wet paint. Let me see if I can block that. Nope. <laughs> that is it. I'm happier with this finished result. I think it looks more on the tonalism style than it originally did when I thought I was done. But I still have a lot to learn with that specific style of painting because that was the first time I ever tried making a painting like that. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you had a fun time watching me attempt tonalism and hope you have a great day and happy painting. Bye bye. <laughs>